Welcome back to the narrowboat that James built. We're in Kings Langley still, where we have been joined by my old boat Dope. Haven't seen her in a while. And at the end of this line of boats is me. You'll spot that the sides of my pram hood have been taken off. That's because we mentioned the C word, cruising. Hence the fact that the wind picked up sharply. Sun's out though, so time to put the boat into drop top mode and head out of Kings Langley. Just time to do my pre-cruise checks and realize I was a little bit low on diesel and beer. Luckily there was a fuel supplier in the lock who gave me a can of diesel. So after adding 18 litres of diesel and using a state-of-the-art measuring technique I was able to stock up on the rest of the stuff we needed. Right, time for a quick prayer to the list of gods. And after having set up the lock, we were ready to go. Okay, we're off. We don't have very far to go until the first lock. Okay, we're in. Just edging the boats out here after lock 69A. And I've been here before. There's a channel coming in here and a weir there. So there's quite a lot of movement underneath the surface of the water going that way. And then there's a channel coming in there. So there's actually quite a lot of turbulence in this water. And I've smashed this boat against that sidings once or twice. So I'm gonna try not to do it today. Fine. Bridge 158 is pram hood friendly, good to know. Now we are approaching the canal side backside of the Ovaltine factory.
making our way past the geese and the moored boats. I'm having a bit of difficulty here. This lock gate doesn't seem to be opening fully. It's all right. This lock gate doesn't open properly. tricky little spot here for Rob it's like a double s bend so I've told him to go on and I'll sort out these lock gates right nearly left my windlass here I'm back to only having one there she is Okay, let's find Rob. We've officially left Kings Langley now. We're heading under bridge 158B. And then we've got that long stretch underneath the M25. So that's the next bit for us. Got one eye on the bridge and the windscreen. Oh, shit. underneath the M25. Right, we're on this long stretch underneath the M25, so I'll see if I can catch up with Rob. Come on, Lister. There he is. We're catching. All 13 horsepower of her. You alright? <laughs> yeah, man. Right. right, there's a lock just down there. Um, and that's our penultimate lock of the day. Oh no, it's not, it's our last one. Excellent. I need to do something about this. I don't like all my bathroom supplies being on show all the time. Not the look I'm going for. A blind is in order, I think. Nothing says continuous cruiser like a toothpaste stain on the outside of the boat. Go clean that as well. This is North Grove Lock, number 71. Rob's just mooring up, I've set the lock up, and this is a former King's hunting ground all around here, hence it's called King's Langley, that village over there. I don't know what king it was. Anyway, history lesson over. Half full. What I'm thinking of doing is putting some lights in, obviously, knowing me, on the outside underneath those rails so at night it illuminates the canvas and that those cream rails. 
I reckon that'll look pretty cool. There's another one that doesn't open properly. That's as open as that gets. You're basically losing a foot there. After getting both boats in and opening the lower paddles, I reminded Rob of a very important job he had to do. Rob, do you want to take those beers out of the fridge now? Good man. Fenders are up, you'll be pleased to see. Tires up. Now you're talking. No, that's not going to work. But you're right, that's what they should make. Right, lock 71 is empty. We're good to go. This is a stream fed. There's a stream which goes around the back of those trees there, all the way down to there. I think we're probably going to be here for a couple of weeks. So it's always quite reassuring to be in a stream fed pound. That is mad. Out of the three locks we've done today, three gates don't open fully. We're jammed. Because this gate won't open. Okay, that's it. Our last lock of the day is done. This is a really nice stretch of canal we're about to do. It's really windy. Uh, the river Gade runs down here and it's made the canal kind of windy from here all the way down to Rickmansworth, really. Right, this is Hunton Bridge now. This is pretty much where we're looking to moor, so we're gonna find somewhere, possibly on the starboard side here, hopefully. It's quite near the old train track, though. What do you reckon, Skip, up here? Well, well, let's carry on going, let's see what we've got. Okay. I'll get ahead of you. Right, we think we found some moorings long enough for us both to fit in. From around here though, solar, we're on the starboard side, so solar's gonna be slim pickings. It's okay right here, because the hedgerow's quite low, but under there, there's loads of trees, so. Oh, it's a laid path as well, that's quite useful. But we're on pins here. Yeah, that's the spot I'm aiming for, right in that gap. Yes, that's where we want to be. And there's enough room for Rob. Perfect. Rob doesn't need solar. Right, sun goes up there. Yeah, this is perfect. This is the way to end a cruise, sitting on the stern of your boat with your best mate, enjoying a beer, watching the passing boats. Beautiful. Then, I got abused by my pram hood frame as I try to put it back together. Quick lighting of the fire before I head over to HMS Serafina where Rob is making steak and horseradish mash. Mm. Oh yes, that is just what the doctor ordered me. Thank you very much. No worries. We've been well fed on HMS Serafina. Now we're gonna go up to the pub. I think it's the King's Head. Uh, over the bridge up that way and we're going to check out what that's like. It's been nice spending the day here in Hunton Bridge. I discovered that it was King Charles I that used this area as his hunting grounds back in the day. Also discovered that this pound is really shallow. So uh, Rob's in fact grounded. So we're probably gonna move next weekend. We're not gonna spend the two weeks here. Move next weekend down to Grove, uh, maybe spend a couple of weeks there down towards Watford. 
then spin around and try to get back up through Nash Mills when it opens uh, in a few weeks time. That'd be the plan. But whilst I'm here, I do have some jobs to do inside the boat. One of them is lighting. I need to do something on the internal lights because all I've got are these down lights here, which are a bit, you know, they're not the nicest of light. And then those under gunnel LEDs, which again, doesn't, well, it doesn't provide any illumination at all, really, apart from a little bit of atmosphere. So uh, that'll be my plan. I'll come up with an idea of that for this week. Hope you guys are very well. Until next time, take care. Bye. And just a little clip here of when I was on GB News yesterday morning talking about living on narrowboats and the cost of living crisis. Um, and the interview went really well. I won't show you the whole thing. Probably uh, it's not very interesting, really. But I managed to forget something important. I forgot to mention my YouTube channel. No so it was a bit of a fail. You got the mod cons. But honestly, it's 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 luxurious from one of these. There's nothing on here that I that you don't have in your house. I just got a smaller version of it and less of it. Uh, so I've got less floor, less everything else, but it's the same, yeah, and so I've got Wi Fi. Obviously it's a it's a little bit tricky because it's a Faraday cage because obviously it's a steel tube, but um yeah, no Wi Fi works fine. I've got an aerial on board, but sometimes I need it, sometimes I don't. But in the southeast where you've got pretty much five G everywhere, it works fine. So you can work from the boat nice and easily.